<clears throat> hey, good evening, everybody. It's uh, in the April 30th, but kind of late. Sorry about the lighting, but uh, Clark Commando 1983, Clark Commando 1983. I just said that, didn't I? You can tell it's late. Yeah, AKA Mark Ruggiero. This will be what my fifth video, finally continuing my, um, my game of Line of Battle from MMP the Gamers. I'm just going to do a play along. We're going to be at the top of the 10.30 a.m. July 1st scenario turn. Going to cover uh, play as I play and possibly cover some rules. One thing I am going to clarify and fix right now is part of the special rules are once the, uh, you know, I already kind of covered what happens to the cavalry if they take losses. Um, what I didn't cover was actually, so they go away for losses as discussed in an earlier video. But also, once a brigade from um, the uh, first corps here, from Wadsworth Division, uh, goes in the line after quick marching, cavalry go away. So, Khalif's battery stays. He gets to continue the fight. But the cavalry do go away. What that represents, I believe, is they were kind of set off to screen other forces. Uh, Dean Essig covers uh, pretty well um, what, you know, his reasoning for a lot of the first day special rules for, uh, which, like, I believe, uh, was it, where is he? Did I already kill off Reynolds? I think I may have. No, did I? I didn't. I did. Shut Okay, let me look here really quick. Sorry. This is the batteries, Khalees batteries. Uh, got the Wadsworth. Oh, there's Reynolds. Well, he's going to die next turn on cue. Apologize for the glare. I tried to adjust my lighting. Obviously, I'm not focused on the whole map. I am playing the four map uh, traditional start. So let's, you know, let's get rolling. Uh, anyways, video five. Happy to do it. Got chemo tomorrow. So we'll see what next this next week brings. And to walk around my table, hopefully the sound's okay. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just get started. So at this point, it's the top of the 10.30 a.m. turn. It's like I said, July 1st. And uh, as pointed out in an earlier video, I'm using an expanded sequence to play that's not like super needed. But I got it off of BGG. Comes in a little bit handy. I am playing on Vassal, so I'm getting really familiar with the rules. Um, so anyways, that being said, let me uh, get my stuff straight here just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So the Confederates, Lee's not on the board yet. They can't issue any orders. Uh, Davis and Heth are on their recon in force. Uh, reinforcements this turn. Looks like we're going to get McIntosh's Artillery Battalion, which uh, I've got on board. I don't think you can see him yet. They're not on board. Uh, Pegram, of course, up here has you know, orders to bombard the cavalry. I really didn't use them that much because there was no artillery ammo on the board and really couldn't get much effective shots. Uh, Breckenbrow and uh, Pettigrew basically here till they get orders. Um, these gentlemen here, uh, who's that? Magruder, Pender, uh, Scales, I believe, they are marching up. They're going to get uh, right behind. Uh, are they there already? Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, they're going to get up and. Uh, Basically, they're in position, I believe, actually, behind Hers Ridge. So, they are where they're supposed to go. So, that being said, the main action is going to be, um, I got some guys uh, way in the back here that are finally in line. I got Wayne and um, who's, uh, Thomas, Pender's division. 
And they are going to start, uh, let's see here, really quick. I'm looking up the orders. Here we go, Thomas Pendu Brigade, order number four. So for the scenario, order number four, those are found on page uh, four of the Rebel Order of Arrival. Um, then they will be, uh, once they're all in line and on their ridge on Knoxville at Whistler's Ridge, um, they will, uh, they'll follow Hess's attack, but the division cannot move into any hex of the Hurra Ridge Road until issued new orders. So they will basically march up to the Hurra Ridge Road and then sit there. So until they get new orders. Okay, so that catches us up. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I like to, so we normally go through like command phase, which like I said, you do not have uh, any orders to issue because there's no nothing allowed till uh, Lee gets on the board. Then you would do things like, you know, you could do your post artillery as part of it. You can roll for initiative. Per the uh, special first day rules, everybody that's under orders, uh, yeah, they can't roll for initiative. And basically initiative, by the way, is for move orders and they're for made for like small adjustments to position, that type of thing. Uh, you can read, read the rules. I'm really enjoying that. Dean did a great job. He's also pretty responsive uh, answering questions. So then you do attack recovery, which is if something had fluke attack stoppage, which under the recon and force rules, Archer and Davis uh, don't have to roll for fluke attack stoppage, so therefore there's no attack recovery. Then we go to the activity phase, which is movement and combat, which is the heart of the game. So that being said, we're going to proceed. And uh, I think tonight's pretty late. I'm going to just try to get through the Confederate part of the turn and save the Union part uh, for my next video. And uh, so here we go. So really the only thing that uh, needs to happen here is um, we're gonna first things first, we're gonna go ahead and move the uh, gentlemen that are, um, what are they doing here? Let's see, Lane Scales, order number four. So they're basically in line. They're going to move up behind Hers Ridge. Uh, I focused most of the action here, so I'm not quite sure because I'm not looking at my camera. You can see back here, but since this is where the majority of the action is going to occur, that's where I focused the camera. So I'm going to just go ahead and move these guys. So line infantry have uh, six movements. So one, two, three, four. Uh, looks like five and then one two three four five what i'm doing is i'm moving up scales towards uh hers uh road per their orders and they're you know really honestly pretty good brigade now we're gonna move up uh uh, uh what's his name mcgrew sorry oh boy i butchered the new name McGrew, Mc... oh boy part of pender's division how about that so we're going to just move them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're in line. That's per the rules. They have to do that. And we're moving up to get behind Hers Ridge where they're going to sit until they get new orders. So that's done. We're going to start moving up um, Thomas. They're way in the back here by Whistler Ridge. All right. And they're moving up. The same thing. They're going to eventually end up sitting behind the um, uh, Hers Ridge Road. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six. You want to keep in mind, I said I'd go over some rules, just a reminder. Regiments need to stay within six of their brigade commander. And the um, uh, Brigade commanders have to stay within eight of their, this is just command radius, stay within eight of their uh, core commander. And then the core com uh, division, the core is 12 from core to army, but you don't have to trace to the army is 20. That's command radius. If you're not in command radius, if you move, you have to move towards the command radius. 
unless they're under uh, orders to do something else, generally benefits you to um, keep your commands together. So now we're going to move on to reinforcements, Macintosh's artillery battalion. Uh, we are using the advanced column rules. So artillery can have, uh, let's see here, four factors per hex, which normally is not a big problem unless they're really huge. And then we use the column markers. So they're just marching up the uh, Cash Town Pike, and they are to go to hex. Um, let's see here, four or five. I only looked this up like 27 times. I'm sure you've never had that happen when you play a game. Uh, 16, 13, and then we'll be in the heart of the action. So we'll be right here, and then they stop. So looking at the, the terrain, the Limbered Artillery has a movement of 10. So we're going to take the battalion. We like our. Uh, Napoleonic guns, so we're going to lead with them, get them in the lead here. So we're going to go, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and actually they're there. So that's four guns, and then we're going to have two more Napoleons, a couple other guns. There are four per hex per the uh, advanced column, can't stack while you're in column. Artillery can never stack with artillery <coughs> when it's limbered. Uh, so, in column they could, and your stacking is up to, uh, was it 16 uh, factors? Or, yeah. All right, so here we go. Now we're in the heat of the action. Let me, I'm going to see if I can get this in the picture, my cool little new die roller. And... Let me see. I'm going to have to walk around the table. I did do a separate video on this. It's, uh, I think it was like $15 from, uh, oh, don't want to block the action. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. I'm going to go look. Part of having this big table and uh, the way I've got the camera set up. So let's walk around. You know, I'm not bitching I got a big table. I'm actually really happy that I'm able to do that. Let me see if I can actually get this die roller in the picture better so you'll be able to see the dice. That can work. Let me look so just a little bit and I think that will work. All right, so we're in business. All right, you're going to like this. This is really cool. I love uh, accessorizing my games. <clears throat> All right, so now we're in the heat of the action. So what we're going to do, so obviously Archer and Davis are under orders as a recon in force, right? And the recon in force, basically they're attacking this way. Ideally, they want to get to, uh, what is this, uh, the Seminary Ridge Road, I believe, by Sherwood's Woods here, because if they get somebody in there, it releases the Confederates. Uh, Lee becomes on fire for orders, uh, operates on this foresight. A lot of really bad shit happens. So, oh, pardon my French, bad stuff happens. All right, so the first thing that's going to happen is uh, we're going to go ahead and activate the... Uh, I want to do Archer. No, you know what? Yeah, let's do Archer because that's important. He's falling behind. So you'll notice he's a zero command rating. And there's a rule that uh, was pointed out in another video that I watched. A lot of people miss. For the brigades, when they're zero rated uh, brigades, you actually have to roll a die. And on a one, they don't get to move. And like I said, we're in the, the uh, action phase. It's where you move, shoot, etc. So we're going to, if you roll one, no movement. Uh, two or three, they get half, so they would get three movement points. And then a, a four, you know, yeah, four, five, or six, they get their full movement. So we're going to go ahead and go with the red die for the Confederate. Now, why it's a lot of fun. A little bit noisy, really cool. 
All right, so let's see what the dice give us. A two. All right, so Archer's Brigade is going to get half movement. Heth, Heth it's kind of like their act. Well, he's their division commander, but he has to on the Cash Town Pike unless he gets up here somewhere. So you have to do that. You have to do it in order. You have to clear your activating. So we're going to go ahead and do, uh, let's go ahead and get Archer going. So we've got the 13th Alabama here. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at the terrain effects chart. And we're going to try to get up here so we can uh, <clears throat> press our attack. We're going to shoot to, uh, I'm not going to be able to shoot because I only have three moving points. You can always move one hex. So if you look, the woods actually don't impact except where there's uh, green. But there is a slope here. This is called uh, rising ground, I believe, or the slope. So, or incline ground hex. So, zero to two costs two movement points. <coughs> so, two. Now, we're not going to be able to uh, shoot. So, I think that's as far as I could. I could roll to close here. But I don't know that that, you know, I'm not going to be able to shoot anyways. Uh, so, when you move, or the action phase, you can, you know, not move and just fire. Or you can move and fire, but you can only spend up to half your movement. So next in line, what we're going to do, because we want to hit the hit the Federals, right? So third Alabama. So what's going to happen here, you'll notice, actually, we're not. He's down to two. He's small. He's pretty messed up. So I don't think uh, it's really that great an idea to move and shoot, because that would give the uh, Union... Uh, a chance to uh, fire. I believe the line of sight's blocked because of this uh, crest line. That's what these dashed lines are. You can see all these dashed lines are the crest of the crest of the hill. The line of sight in this game is not pancake like ASL. It's rolling. So they're basically on the back side of this the ridge and they're on the flip side so they cannot see through the uh, crest because it for all intents and purposes raises the elevation level one so now we're going to go over here to the first tennessee uh there's you there is lost charts you can use i'm going ahead and uh, i'm just using the counters so this is a five strength so we definitely want to close right we want to get in there and uh execute the spirit of the orders so <clears throat> we are gonna try to close and then this hex and how you close is you look at the morale he's a b morale unit and on your play raid card there is a chart the uh, closing roll table so i'll go through that really quick so b morale i need a three or better um you would get a plus one to the die roll if you had a two or better uh, leadership value. There's no. Uh, we're not advancing into the rear hex of a unit, so there's no plus one for that. I'm not under um, any kind of a uh, shaken status. Uh, I'm not advancing in the in the frontal in the front of artillery with canister. Uh, uh, let's see. Starts. Or just move adjacent. So, uh, and if you were already adjacent trying to charge, sorry, which is a, a so they've replaced close combat with what's called charge. So, for example, I'm not going to do it. I am going to roll here in a second. So, I'm going to need a three or better to be able to advance into this hex here. I don't want to go here because it'll expose ourselves to both, but. Uh, the whole mechanism for close combat games done a really wonderful job of simplifying it and you actually get the same result but the point is you would roll the close here and then say I had one of these guys to charge there I don't they would have to roll the close again to be able to succeed and then you would go through the, the uh, current phase so once again you have three or better we're going to roll the red die whoops here we go And we get a three. So we get the close. 
So what happens there is I did expand this very important. I expand movement and I'm shooting. I spent one movement point. So I'm within under half, you know, so I do get to shoot. Um, but what that does, it triggers an opening volley because I moved and fired. That's critical. If I just moved up, uh, there's no opening volley, which it replaces defensive fire. There again, I think Dean's done a really great job of streamlining things because honestly, you end up with usually kind of the same result. So we're going to look at the little chart here. It's an opening volley table. I've, uh, you know, I should be showing the charts, but I'm not. Sorry, guys. Uh, you can get the charts online if you want to follow along, if you don't have the game. But, uh, and I'll work on that for my next video. But I have shown the charts in my other videos. So, that being said, look at the chart. It's pretty easy. Range of one. Um, there is, uh, uh, you know, no modifiers to this roll. We're going to use a red die, or sorry, the white die for the union. It's one dice, one die. So one through three, no effect. Four through a six will inflict the loss. Here we go, white guy. Isn't that cool? So much fun. A four. All right. So that means we get a uh, hit. So what happens is, first thing that happens is we're going to adjust. They take a loss. So we're going to adjust the loss marker from uh, five. And we go down to four. And then we're going to do a morale check. So B, morale. So looking at the morale table, I just know there's no modifiers. So this is a two dice roll on the B chart. So let's see what happens. B morale is pretty good. So, so oh, a 10. That is not a good roll. So they're going to become shaken, back one, then they lose one. So they're going to retreat a hex. They're going to lose another strength. So now they're down to three. So now they're a small unit, which has effects on the morale check in the future. And they're going to become shaken. So I need to pop me out a shaken marker. So that's a morale effect. Uh, you know, it's not a lot, not a big impact at this point, but it is going to affect some things. So we're going to mark it. Now, the other thing we're going to also do, and this is another rule, is the Cowardly Legs Marker. And I'm going to just do it, uh, even though for all intents and purposes, there's a uh, no real impact. But I'm going to, I want to, wanted to make these videos educational. So, Cowardly Legs are placed uh, in a hex when the unit retreats out of a hex and what that would do and like i said this is actually going to have no impact i don't believe uh, no uh well it will actually so anybody adjacent and it's pretty temporary but you know you get big lines of guys but that's going to go right here in the hex uh where they retreated from what that would do is so any uh uh confederate unit next to them that would impact their morale they had to take a morale check again. All right, so now, even though we're shaken, we still get to shoot, right? And no, we don't, because now they're behind the crest line and they can't see them. All right, that was not a good outcome for that. So, moving on. Uh, so, let's see, Archer. And you'll know for movement, with all the terrain charts, unless there's a... Uh, what do they call it? Um, sorry guys, you think I'd have this all memorized. Like incline ground hex with slope, so it's these hexes here with the lines. There's no movement cost. There's lots of movement costs for slopes. So it looks like we've got these guys with muskets to do and the 7 Tennessee. They're both uh, B morale. They're again in the spirit of the orders. We're going to go ahead and move up. So we're not going to be able to get a shot with these guys, but they're going to go one. So you can move into any frontal hex side, cost one. If you want to change facing, cost one. But we don't need to change facing. So they have, six, they have three movement points. One, 
And we're going to go ahead here for two. And we're not going to close. I don't see a point at this point in closing. So I um, want to avoid the, the, uh, the railroad cut hexes here. Not, not a good place to be. Uh, and then these guys with Archer, we're going to, 7 Tennessee, you're going to move up, go 1, 2. They can't shoot because they spent more than half. That's going to end the, um, that's going to end Archer's uh, move. So now we're going to do Davis. Now this is interesting. Archer, throughout this whole game, has rolled zero, you know, zero move, zero move, half, half, where Davis be in full move. Problem is, you know, the plan was if they could keep up was to swing around like this. So I think we're going to try to do, make some adjustments and, and kind of come in this way to attack. Because like, you don't want to have happen as Davis end up way out here. These guys end up getting pushed back. I should note the recon and force ends at noon. Or when the Confederates decide they've had enough. And basically you go through a, a fleek attack stoppage. Basically, they're going to retreat to where they feel safe, get in line, and then they basically become no order status. But we're not going to do that. So once again, Davis is a zero leader. So we're going to use red die. So remember, on a one, no movement, two or three half, four or five or six, they get their full movement. And we get a five, so he gets his full movement once again. Um... Yeah, it's not a good place to be in this railroad cut. So, I think what we're going to do, we get full movement. We're going to try to adjust a little bit here. We're going to go one, change facing. Two, change facing. Three, uh, half their movement. So, we have a shot here. But these are muskets. So when you look at the chart, muskets are uh, pretty interesting. Let's see, I believe their range is one. Uh, let me see here. Blah, 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 blah. Musket, no, max range, two hexes. So they're considered buck and ball. So what that means is, so the first thing that's gonna happen, these guys are gonna get an opening volley. So there again, uh, we're going to roll. It's two X's this time, so you need a five or a six, so red, uh, white die. And no hit. I got a two. So, opening volley's done. There again, because they moved and they declared a shot. They're able to do that because they spent half or less of their movement. So we're going to look at the table. we got a strength of five. That's where we start on the combat table. It's a range of two hexes. So for small arms, that's a one shift left. And then their buck and ball uh, match range for effects. So they're not adjacent, so you don't get that. So we're going to be rolling on the two to three table. Now note, underneath the combat table is a threshold value chart. So for uh, positive shifts, which is not a big worry here, you got to make sure you have reached the uh, threshold strength point value. Uh, so, anyways, two to three, we're going to roll two dice. Put them together. Yeah, oh, they get a nine. All right, so a nine is going to be one loss. And uh, so the union unit is going to take a loss. That's the first thing that I'm going to do. And I'm clipping my counters with my Oregon laminator, which, yeah, I cut as I go usually. I don't. Uh, Clip the whole game. Uh, the interesting part of that is I always know, gee, how far did I ever get to play in this game? Because based on the uh, what's clipped. And I think this is going to be a well played series for me. All right. Thanks for bearing with me. I have no idea how long this video has been going. So we're going to, this is the, uh, let's see, make sure. So the strength of eight. This is the uh, 76 New York. So he's going to go to a strength of seven. You point that towards the front of the unit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do, we got a leader. So we're going to do a leader loss check for Cutler, 11 or 12. Don't want that. 
and we get a six. So Cutler stands his ground. Then we do a morale check. Doesn't get killed or wounded. These guys are C morale, but they do have uh, Cutler stacked with them. So you get two shifts in their favor, which puts them on the A table. There again, there's no real modifiers. So we roll, and we get, ooh, an 11. That's not good. Shaken back two, lose one. Ouch. Wow. Okay. So they're staggered. Let's see. Two, one, one. Wadsworth. Uh, yeah. So go back towards the rear. So we're going to go one, two. And you could retreat through the artillery, which. Ugh, I should know the rule for that. I gotta, I may be doing this wrong. You might have to. I'll look it up later. And I'll correct it in the next video if I do. So they're shaking. They say I rolled an 11. Oh, they're back two. So I actually have to go. Did I go two? One, I was here. Three, one, two. So I went back two. They're going to lose the strength point, and they're going to become shaken. Okay, so we're going to clip that counter. And this is going to work out well. I'm actually finally starting to get a little tired. Get my chemo tomorrow, yay. But luckily the side effects are minimal, even though I do 52 hours of it. And... Uh, Back on wood, the cancer for now is heading in the correct direction. So we're going to mark the hex. I guess this is where my tweezers could come in handy. And we're going to take the loss. Let's pull the stack out. And we're going to drop down to six strength. All right. So we are at six strength. No, when a unit drops to less than half, it becomes wrecked. So that hasn't happened uh, actually to anybody yet, except for, no, no, nobody yet. All right, so that was eventful. It kind of opens up uh, maybe a little bit of stuff. So we have six movement. We're going to go, we're going to go one. And I think what I want to do is go two. I want to make sure we can shoot. I'm going to go three. We're going to do an opening volley on, uh, from here. So there again, the white die. Licking two hexes. We need a five or a six. Oh, a six. Gets a hit. All right. So... I think things starting to take some casualties finally. I've been playing pretty conservatively, and uh, it is interesting in my vassal game with my friend Kevin. <coughs> our opening volley rolls have been consistently low, so not a lot of losses. But that game's really developed interestingly because he's playing the Confederates, and I think we're on like the 11 a.m. turn, and. Uh, he was getting really lucky in his uh, movement rolls. I mean, I was like really worried. And then these guys showed up just in the nick of time. So that may be what happens here. We'll see. So we go down to a five strength. We're going to do a morale out leader loss. Uh, 10, no. It's 11 or 12, basically. B morale, no effect. Morale check. Yeah, six, no effect. And then we're going to shoot. Uh, so we got uh, strength five. So we're going to be on the five. They're rifle. There's no special modifiers for that. There is one left because it is that you look on the chart. For small arms, a range of two. It's one left shift. So we're going to roll two dice. We're going to be on the uh, two to three table. And snake eyes. So nothing. All right. So, pretty uneventful. They took a loss. They took, uh, took the 
bad end of the stick on that. So now these guys move them to six. And now we're going to go one, two, three, four. I think we'll stop there. These guys here are going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. This is called crab walking, by the way. Five, six. All the regiments were within six. That's way back here. One, two, three, four. We'll move them up a little bit. All right. And that's it. Pegram's batteries really don't have any shots. I don't believe. I mean, they could maybe have a long range shot at Khalif. But I think it would get blocked by the crest. And honestly, a long range shot like that, I don't feel like it's worth the risk of depleting my ammo. So we're not going to do that. And uh, all right. So we go to the sequence of play. That ends the activity phase for the Confederates. So now we're going to rally. So rally is, a, and I love this extended sequence of play. Basically, you improve the morale all your guys so you know it's pretty temporary but you know depends when it takes just get in the habit of marking your morale states shaken improves to nothing disorganized would improve to shaken etc cetera, etc cetera. and we're going to go ahead let's see if i can do this without messing shit up with the cowardly legs marker goes away and that ends the confederate turn so when we continue, we will be at the, uh, it'll be the Union's turn. And they're going to get some reinforcements. Um, get some guys off map you can't see that are still in the process of uh, quick marching towards the battle. So quick march, once you're able to do that, you can move 16 hexes. You don't uh, have movement points. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's kind of a long video, but maybe you're having some uh, coffee or, you know, relaxing. I'm having a great time playing this series. I'm going to at least do, you know, another couple of videos on it. And hopefully we'll get into like maybe some close assaults or whatnot. But I'm trying to cover, uh, maybe actually issue an order or something. I don't know if, you know, we'll see it. I do want to go over the order system. And hopefully you'll find in the video is valuable. So anyways, uh, so it looks like we're 38 minutes. Which, uh, hope you enjoyed it. I uh, enjoyed making it. And love wargaming. Love the hobby. Thanks for all the support with the cancer fight. April 30th, 2023. I don't normally date my videos, but hey, why not, right? All right. Good night, folks.